In this video, I'm going to be going over how to make something transparent or how to remove background out of an image. So I'll open up my demo image here, which will be a very simple floor plan. And so this will be really useful if you're creating a presentation or working on your portfolio, something like that where you have um, you know, a background that you want to see through and you don't want to see um, you know, a bunch of white squares or something like that. So um, you know, this could either be a scanned in image brought from um, AutoCAD or Revit or SketchUp or something like that. So we have our basic floor plan here. And notice that over in the Layers palette, whenever you bring in an image like this, it opens up called Background here. That's what the layer is called. And then there's this little lock symbol. So if we wanted to go in and use a paintbrush on this or do something like that, that would be fine. Uh, but if we want to actually cut pixels away and make something transparent, uh, Photoshop won't let us. It won't let us cut away at a locked layer like that. So what do we do? How do we unlock it? The simplest and easiest way to unlock a layer is to come over and just double click on that name background, which will open this up and will let you rename it. Basically, all you have to do is rename it. I'm completely fine with it being called layer zero, but if you wanted to rename it, you certainly could rename it, you know, floor plan or something like that. Once I do that, see that little lock symbol has gone and now I can basically do whatever I want. Okay, so the, the easiest way to go about this is to first make sure that the drawing is as black and white as you can get it, and then we'll go in and select a color to remove it. So I'll just zoom in a little bit. In the last video, I talked about using adjustment layers to tweak levels and brightness and contrast and that kind of thing. In this video, I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way, if you will. So what we'll do is go up to image and adjustments. And here we see those same options such as levels, brightness and contrast. So if I pick levels, you'll see that if I come in here and just take this black one and pull it down, if I do it real far, you'll see that well, it gets really dark. But you know, I can get this a little bit blacker and the whites a little bit whiter. You have to be careful if you drag that too far, you'll see that you start to lose some of your detail there. So you have to be kind of careful with it. But already that's starting to look a little bit better. Hit say OK. And I could also go in image adjustments, brightness and contrast, and you know, do the same kind of thing. This will be particularly important if you've scanned in an image where you might have some crinkles and stuff around the edges. Once you're getting it, uh, you know, pretty good, what we can do then is select the white is basically all we want to do. There's lots of ways in Photoshop to select, you know, we could be coming in with a magic wand and clicking, for example, around the outside. If we just wanted to get rid of the outside here, we could do that. But if we want to get rid of all of it, what we'll do is go up to select at the top and color range. Then I'll just pick somewhere on my drawing in a white area that represents that white color. You might need to play around with this a little bit. Um, the fuzziness will determine you know, how close or far away it will get from areas that are a little bit in between and things like that. So, you know, you might have to play around a little bit with your drawing, but generally speaking, 40 seems to work pretty well. Then I'll say OK. And you should see a lot of marquees going on around here. So it goes around every area of white. I can take my magnifying glass and zoom in a little bit and see that actually that's looking pretty well. This isn't going to be perfect, but it'll be pretty close. At this point, all I need to do is go up to the word edit and cut or do control X on the keyboard. Once I do that, you'll see that all that white disappears, the marquee goes away, and now we can actually see through to the gray and white checker in the background. 
A little trick I like to use to see how this is actually looking is to create a new dummy layer and fill it with a color because I might think this looks good here, but then if I take it out to InDesign, for example, and put this on a colored background, I might discover that this actually doesn't look nearly as good as I think it does. So I'll come over and grab a new blank layer, and I'll just use a simple paint bucket to fill that in. So I'll open up the color picker. I usually like to pick a bright color like red or magenta, and I will simply paint bucket in there. Now you might be thinking, well that's just great, you can't see the floor plan. Don't forget that over in your layers palette, we can shuffle those around like a deck of cards. So I can grab this layers, uh, uh, this layer layer, <laughs> and uh, put it underneath. I might just rename that red, there we go. Alright, so now you can see that if I look at this, it's not looking so hot. You know, when I don't have that red layer on, it looks okay. But that's not, not ideal zoom in a little bit. So how are we going to fix that? There's a lot of different options here and everybody's going to have their their own way to go but I think one of the easiest ways is to come up to image adjustments and then open up hue and saturation. What we can do then is take this lightness bar at the bottom and just drag it all the way to the left. And I say okay now you see that those black lines are in fact nice and black. Right? So, you know, I might even come in when I'm looking at this and notice that this didn't look too hot here. So I might just want to back up and tweak how my selection is working. Or if it wasn't too bad, I could come in with an eraser and erase away at that. I'll take my Opacity up to 100%. You get the idea. Once you decide that this is looking pretty good and you're happy with it, we can go in and just throw away that dummy color layer. We don't actually need that. Okay, so then I'll do a file and a save as, and I will save this as a Photoshop file for now. And I'll give this a name like transparent at the end or whatever might make sense to me and hit save. Okay. So when I bring that into InDesign or another program, I will actually be able to see the transparency. I like to make a note that you can actually change the color of this line work pretty easily. So if I wanted to, I could come into Image and Adjustments again and go back to Hue and Saturation. That's how we made it black in the first place. First of all, if I drag that all the way up, you'll see that it turns white. So if I was doing a portfolio or presentation with a very dark or black background, I might actually want to make my um, technical drawings white. That could be a really good effect, and that's a very, very simple way to do it. Otherwise, you know, for one reason or another, maybe you actually want these to be some sort of color. The trick there is to click this box called Colorize. If I do that, first of all, I might want to bring this up a little bit so it's lighter. And you'll see already it's kind of turning pink. I can bring up the saturation, and I can make this any color I wanted to. OK. And then I would just do a file, a save as, and I might call that transparent purple. 